Hello and welcome back to An Old Man Watches and today I'm going to be talking about the decidedly non-historical historical epic Barbarossa from 2009. Uh, this is also known under the titles Sword of War and Barbarossa Siege Lord which is obviously the title on your screen right now. Uh, whatever title you see it under, though, the film depicts with a huge amount of artistic license the confrontation between the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa, who sought to expand the Empire's dominion in northern Italy, and the Lombard League, which was a coalition of Italian city-states that formed to resist him. The film charts the plans of Barbarossa for the invasion and, to a much larger extent, the plans of his adversaries to thwart him. Uh, chief among those uh, adversaries is Alberto da Gisano, uh, who saved the Emperor's life as a boy, but who now fights against Barbarossa to preserve the autonomy of his people. Uh, the strategies of these opposing forces culminate in the Battle of Lediano, where the two forces collide in a struggle that decides the outcome of the entire campaign. So when I say that this film takes a huge amount of artistic license with its historical setting, I, I, I really mean that. Uh, the movie doesn't just invent secret wonder weapons for the climactic battle or conjure whole cloth the idea of Alberto, Alberto de Gisano having previously saved Barbarossa's life, though it does do both those things. It also features as a protagonist a man who did not actually exist. I mean, you know, there have certainly been men named Alberto de Gisano, um, and perhaps there was even someone of, of that name at the battle, but he was definitely not the leader of the Lombard forces, uh, and in fact would not have been anyone of significance if indeed he was there. No contemporary account of the battle mentions anyone of that name, and in fact the first reference to him dates to some 150 years later in, a, in an account which almost certainly created him as a Lombardic hero to contrast against you know, Barbarossa, who is the villain of the piece. So yeah, it's a thoroughly non-historical historical epic. But is it an enjoyable watch? Well, it's a very mixed bag, and much of the entertainment comes from the film's weaknesses rather than from its strengths. <clears throat> so this movie pretty clearly wants to be the new Braveheart almost as badly as that film wanted to be the new Spartacus. There are lots of stirring speeches about freedom! Or at least there are lots of speeches that are supposed to be stirring. There are lots of battle scenes and skullduggery and treachery aplenty before the final climactic battle between the competing forces. So how does Barbarossa measure up to those aspirations? Well, it's certainly no Spartacus. Uh, the acting, for one thing, is decidedly uneven. I suspect a considerable amount of the English dialogue was done entirely in post-production. Um, Rutger Hauer is in this. F. Murray Abraham is in this. Most of the rest of the cast um, don't have a presence in sort of English language cinema. Um, and I suspect a lot of them do not speak good English. Which, you know, it's fine. I don't speak good Italian or, in fact, any Italian. Uh, and that post-production aspect of the dialogue probably contributes uh, to the, uh, the acting problems. And then we have the writing, which is pretty bad. Uh, the supposedly stirring speeches are nothing of the sort, offering wandering deep into the territory of unintentional comedy. Uh, the film is apparently partly funded by an Italian political party that espouses independence for the northern part of that country, and which uses the fic fictional Alberto de Giussano on its emblem. Uh, so there is definitely a strong political slant to the whole thing, uh, and the film's strident calls for Lombardic autonomy are not intended just for the audience, or just for the ears of the characters, but also for those of the audience, I think. Uh, one thing that I did like about the film, and which may come as a bit of a surprise, given the film's very specific real-world political agenda, is that it's a lot more balanced in its depiction of the two sides than other movies of this type, particularly something like Braveheart. The Mel Gibson film made no effort to depict any nuance to the struggle. It's very much nice, liberty-loving Scots versus evil, tyrannical English bastards. Um, whereas this film actually gives a reasonably sympathetic portrayal of Barbarossa. I mean, he's clearly the antagonist, given that he's facing off a bunch against a bunch of Lombards who spend all of their time shouting about freedom, but he's certainly not depicted as a sociopathic monster. He repeatedly attempts to find a non-violent resolution to his dispute with the city of Milan, resorting only to war after multiple provocations. He also spares prisoners on several occasions by the admittedly very brutal standards of the 12th century. His behaviour in the film is, is positively restrained and honourable. Whatever the film's other faults, and trust me, it's got them, uh, I'm impressed to see it depict its antagonist as something a lot more complicated and ultimately more noble than taking the easy road of making him a ravening, despotic ogre. 
So the script's many anachronistic and inaccurate speeches about freedom are definitely one of the filmmakers' less good ideas in Barbarossa. They espouse sentiments that people of the time basically didn't hold. Uh, and given the financing of the film, I suspect, as I said, that the audience for those speeches is actually the modern, real-world audience, not the characters. But frankly, films like Braveheart are just as guilty of such anachronisms. What those films don't do, however, is hinge their entire climactic battle scene on one of the most absurd, impractical, and frankly, downright comical secret weapons of all time. You see, the dominant military unit of the time that these battles were happening, late 12th century, was the cavalry. Uh, which would generally overrun or scatter infantry when it faced them in open battle. Now, in the real life Battle of Leano, the Lombard League achieved the rare feat of thwarting infantry, uh, thwarting cavalry with infantry, and they did this by arranging deep lines of defence with shield walls and forests of spears. I guess this was judged insufficiently cinematic for the film's climactic sequence, um, so instead the script conjures up another explanation: wagons filled with guys with scythes. Somehow, despite the fact that these are trundling along at barely walking pace and have absolutely zero manoeuvrability, the Imperial Cavalry obligingly funnels directly into the right place to get mowed down like wheat, and not a single side get rips out of anyone's hands in the process. It's hilariously improbable and unconvincing to watch, uh, even more so than the blatant CGI nature of most of said cavalry in the first place. Uh, it certainly makes a memorable conclusion to the film, but for all the wrong reasons. So, that's Barbarossa. Next time, it's the 200th Old Man Watchers, and to celebrate, I'll be talking about the awesome 80s trash Prisoners of the Lost Universe. It is not in any way a good film, but it's kind of spectacular nonetheless. Uh, but that's next time. Until then, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.